are stepping ever closer to what should be a historical Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. And inching ever closer to what could be an exciting Survivor Series. We can only hope. But, we're, we, we still have quite a few stops along the way. Including this Monday Night Raw. The 123rd Monday Night Raw we have spoken of. Yes. Uh, there's been a lot more Monday Night Raws, but there's only been 123 that we've talked about. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure more if, you know, ones we've referenced from the past, but... That's fair. In you know, total, we've talked about... The, the ones that we've reviewed... This is our 123rd. Yes. Uh, and let me tell you, some absolutely blockbuster things happened in this one. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, for instance, Titus O'Neil got beat. It might have been a six-man tag match that had no relevance to what was going on whatsoever, but uh, he, for whatever reason, jumped into the waiting arms of Mark Henry. Because it was too obvious for one of his smaller tag team partners to do it. Yeah, no, it was him and the Shining Stars versus the Golden Truth and Mark Henry. And Titus O'Neil fell victim to the World's Strongest Slam, which was basically the only part of the match that mattered. Pretty much. Squash that Titus brand. Uh, other monumental things that happened? Uh, I can tell you another one. No, go for it. Big E of the New Day defeated uh, Sheamus. Of course, this is the next one you can go to. Absolutely. And uh, the, uh, the big old steaming pile of human hot garbage known as Sheamus. Quoting Kofi. Yes. Uh, uh, Cesaro kind of caused it to happen, so he gets an assist. Uh, doing the Facebook Live thing like Sheamus was trying to do last week. Yeah. Uh, she Sheamus decided, well, hell, if he's recording something, why not record the best bro kick ever? Yeah, and then it, the best bro kick ever looked a lot like getting splashed in the corner by Biggie Langston and then rolled up. Yeah. Uh, which is okay. Highlight of the match, Cesaro walking around ringside wearing Biggie's jacket and over his suit. And Sheamus getting beat. Yeah, well, that's just, uh, that might have been the highlight of Raw. Sheamus losing? Yeah. All right. Sheamus and Titus O'Neil lost. Yeah. The only other way this would have been better is if for some reason the Miz and Mojo Raleigh came over from SmackDown and got beat. That did not happen. That did not happen. That would have made it, like, my penultimate Monday Night Raw. Yeah. Uh, those are my highlights. Oh, yeah, and Goldberg came back. That happened. Yep. Uh, he said yes. What? <laughs> Bo Dallas beat Neville by himself. Which... And then attack Curtis Axel. Yeah, man, nobody gets to believe in Bo but Bo. Bo but Bo. Nobody gets to believe in Bo but Bo. I Cotton eye Bo. I don't I don't like this Bo Dallas. I'm ba I'm back on the anti Bo train. I, He's I have, so the opposite of I, the Bo Dallas you hated. I and you still don't like. But it. that's because I started to like that Bo Dallas, and then he changed, and now I fucking hate it. I don't like dark. I I don't like Tim Burton crossed with Doctor Seuss. It's just not dark and rhyming is not something that I want from someone like Bo Dallas. It's absolutely what needs to happen. Sure. You just don't know it yet. Um, uh, it was a thing. Yep. You know, it's good to see the NXT guys being utilized well on WWE, the main roster. Yeah. Uh, speaking of NXT guys getting used correctly, we had Braun Strowman defeat the Mile High Trio uh, in, in quite fantastic fashion, though. For me, this might have actually been the most entertaining it, match of It the really was. Watching Braun do as many different things as he did to these three guys 
was pretty fantastic to watch. Right off the bat, the, the move of the match was beeling red pants over the top rope. After, like, like tossing both of the other guys backwards, one of them almost falling on the other's head. Yeah, well, one guy falls down and starts sliding under the ring. The other guy falls over the ropes and literally cartwheels over and sits on his, opponent, uh, sits on his partner's face. Yeah. And like, then they threw red pants out and had both of them catch him. Yeah. Um... One of them got uh, got a big old like reverse DDT situation, and then clubbed down to the floor. One got Braun run. just fucking <laughs> bared his way through one of them. <laughs> it looked like the, he he made the the bear from the Revenant look like Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, quotes uh, from Corey Graves. Corey Graves, the abominable strawman, is my favorite nickname in wrestling today. That was. That was the hot. That was probably my highlight of Raw. Huh. That was the best part of Raw for me. Uh, uh, on top of, uh, uh, it's I get it's tied with Sparkle Brush. Yes, which we'll, 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 we'll get we'll get to that in a second. But uh, Braun destroys all three guys. Tells Foley he's gonna come to the back and find better competition himself. He's gonna take matters into his own hands, and he gets challenged by Sami Zayn. Yeah, to which he just shoved Sami Zayn. Yeah. And Sami Zayn did it because no one else would. Well, I've never considered Sami Zayn the smartest guy on the roster. Challenging Braun Strowman doesn't exactly, uh... Doesn't scream intelligent. Not, no, not, not really. Uh, who knows, though. He is definitely the most high-profile person that Braun Strowman's had to, like... Face by himself. Yeah. Uh, oh, one other real, real big highlight from Raw. You know how we've been really hyping up the fact that the club is like this new aggressive tag team. No more games. Carl Anderson lost to Big Cass real fast. Yeah. Uh, Lita interviewed both Charlotte and Sasha Banks in separate segments, talking about the Hell in a Cell match. Yeah. It was, uh, it was nice to not see Michael Cole. Yeah. But we had Michael Cole interview Goldberg. It was some of the better uh, mic work Charlotte's done in a while. Yeah. No, I, the last couple of weeks, Charlotte has done some of her better promos. She's when she, trying to redeem herself. When she herself. ripped into Rusev last week. She's that, trying to redeem herself for the moments like all the other times before this. Say it. Would I have begun? <laughs> Stuff like that. Um, boy, what other... Um, other awesome things happened here. Riveting Monday Night Raw. Uh, oh, jeez. Uh, okay, we Which, had... by the way, like, most of the stuff I say I'm excited about, I was legitimately excited about. Y'all know how much I don't like Titus and Sheamus. I just didn't give a shit about this Raw, mostly. Um, it was really awkwardly paced, though. We learned about Rusev's family and how much better they are than Roman Reigns' family. And how his dog looks like a little cow. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, this was, uh, Rusev... We learned that the only way to get Rusev over is to have him interrupt a boring 15-minute promo. You mean Roman Reigns? What did I say? You said put Rusev over. Oh. Uh, well, I'm gonna, gonna be get real. Rusev over is... I'm gonna be real. Bochka. If, if anybody got over in this segment, it's Papa Rusev. Papa and Rusev. And his sweet stash. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it was literally going through the Rusev family album... Uh, Rusev and Lana talking about how awesome all of Rusev's family is. Uh, and then Roman Reigns came down, and then he just kind of stood there. And I, I think, did he say something? He said a lot of things. Okay, I, d I don't remember him saying anything. I just remember him getting slapped by Lana and then uh, roundhouse the kicked by Rusev. Uh, to and which then... he tumbled... And then... Uh, Rusev kept beating him up. Yeah. Rusev brought on the stairs, did the accolade on the stairs. He much good the shit out of Roman Reigns. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah, going to that Hell in a Cell match. It's going to be, like, word of the year for the wrestling rundown, I think. Machka? Machka. 2016 was the year of Machka. Yeah. Machka 2016. <laughs> uh, I'd rather have Rusev and Lana in the White House than... Hell yeah. Either of them. Hell yeah. Okay, let's um, let's see. What do we want to talk about now? 
Um, buh, 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 buh. That oh, cover everything else. The, oh. uh, the cruiserweights. Yeah, we had, the cruiserweights we had, had a good we, match. We had a good six-man cruiserweight tag team match. Uh, Brian had, Kendrick teamed up with two of my favorites, Drew Gulak and Tony Nese. And we had T.J. Perkins teaming up with Rich Swan and Cedric Alexander. So basically, we had six-ish of my favorite cruiserweights. Yeah, no, like 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 this five. If you want you want to say best match, this was it. This was by far the best match of the night. Um, yeah, no, it was a very you know it was a lot of Brian Kendrick kind of picking his spots. Uh, Doing the smart thing. Uh, yeah, you know, well, TJP did. They had a backstage segment where TJP was telling Gulak and Nice like, "Oh, did he, you know, promise you like future championship matches if he beats me at Hell in a Cell? You know, is it just to soften me up before our match? You know, is just trying to trying to play into the fact that Brian Kendrick is a little bit of a shady fucker. Um, yeah, <laughs> but uh, luckily he had backup in Rich Swan and Cedric Alexander. Yeah, no, uh, it's a good match. Uh, I liked watching the finish. Yeah. And having, uh, what was it, Swan was in the captain's hook. Well, it was, um, it was, uh, blah, 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 blah. yeah, Nice ended up hitting the 450 on Swan. Yeah. And then as he got back up, Kendrick tagged himself in and locked in the captain's hook. And, and then I loved, my favorite part was watching TJP try and get in the ring. Yeah, it was and, super close. And, and Tony Nese and Gulak were holding his feet yeah. on the outside so yeah. he couldn't get in. I don't know where Cedric Alexander went. He was just... He was, he was actually on the ground uh, on hard camera side. Oh, was he? And he started to get up right after the match ended. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, he was, he was... There was a lot of flipping and flying and being tossed over the ropes and stuff. So, yeah, something took out Cedric Alexander to where he wasn't able to make it. And then, uh, yeah, uh, holding TJP back and causing Rich Swan to tap out. Well done with the cruiserweights. Um, with Bailey and Dana Brooke. Oh yeah, that was um, that was that was an awkward match. The match itself, I thought, was pretty good. It was the a, ending. It was, was a good match for Dana Brooke. The ending was weird. It was it, like the the match itself was good because Dana got to play the aggressive heel, and she yeah. did a very good job of it. And that's that's the one thing that I'll that I'll give to her as far as this finish goes, because she did attack Bailey last week. Yeah. And so that's why this match was happening. And she did quite a number on Bailey, um, where uh, uh, Bailey was trying to go up to the top rope, and uh, she grabbed her arm, wrenched it down over the ropes, smacked her face first into the post and then dragged her in and then pinned her but possibly was supposed to get her feet up on the ropes and just wasn't close enough. Yeah. So it just looked like a really... she like sprawled her foot like way out to the side like she was trying to reach and it looked weird. Yeah, and so it just it really just looked like you know, Bailey didn't realize that she needed to kick out or Yeah. So it was yeah. The commentators good. even seemed a little off by the finish. Yeah, uh, Cor Corey's intensity and like you know, well, he did a really good job of trying to play it off. Yeah, it's like it was because like, like when he's so match surprised, I'm impressed that yeah, because you know, him a big and Byron for Dana Brooke, him and Byron both like said wow right after the finish. Yeah, Michael and I think Cole, that was Corey's like yeah, my, yeah. Michael Cole didn't really say much until like the two of them really tried to play the end like. You know, okay, what just happened? Okay, let's do this. Uh, and so, you know, Byron like, oh wow, I'm surprised. And Corey being the, the the heel supporter. So, um, yeah, interesting there. Um, all right, uh, let's talk about Sparkle Crotch. Uh, we open up with uh, Jericho and Owens coming out. Uh, still upset that Owens has to be in the Hell in a Cell match against Seth Rollins. Yeah. Uh, and Jericho saying, you know, I should be in that match. You know, I, I I should have beaten Seth Rollins last week, but you know, the 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 reason I didn't was I don't even remember what his reasoning why he didn't beat Seth Rollins. It last was week. more officiating. Oh yes. Yeah, oh the yeah, referee, yeah, yeah. The, the referee, referee made the, the list. list. Uh, and then and then uh, and then he <laughs> he talked about you know the reason why or he's, uh, Rollins comes out and and. Uh, starts, says, he's, well, he said the, what should go on the list is the friendship yeah. of Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho. Or or, may, or maybe the tights of Chris Jericho. 
uh, with all of his rhinestones and everything, and uh, started calling him Sparkle Crotch. Sparkle Crotch, or maybe Sparkle Ass. Yeah, Sparkle Ass. And Go to Sparkle Crotch. And, and that was... The chant of the night. Yeah, they, they chanted that a lot. Yeah, eventually Seth just challenges Jericho to a match. Yeah. Says, hey, let's go one-on-one. -on -one. So our main event from last week became our opening match this week. Yeah, this time Kevin Owens was talked to the back by Chris Jericho. Yeah, Jericho specifically said, go to the back. I want you to you know stay back there. I'll do this myself. I'll prove that I should be in that match. Um, and then Owens, uh, despite Jericho asking him to go to the back, uh, came out during the match. Uh, it wasn't... So much a uh, a distraction to Jericho. I don't think Jericho really paid that much attention to it during the match itself. But uh, him and Rollins had a really cool end where they kept like trying to block each other's finishers, and then eventually Seth Rollins ended up catching Jericho when he went for the code breaker, dropped him down, hit a pedigree, and beat Jericho once again. Jericho yeah. was not happy after the match. He was actually yelling at Kevin Owens. Almost called him a stupid idiot. Yeah, and then Kevin Owens got real mad and said, I'm not, I'm not one of these people you can call a stupid idiot and put on your stupid list and blah, 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 blah. And then, then Stephanie came in and said, kids, don't make me turn this raw around. Yeah, and then she took... this, is, And this was like her official uh, accepting the challenge uh, laid out by Shane and Daniel Bryan last yeah. week uh, for the three Survivor Series style matches, uh, saying that she wants Jericho and Owens on the same page, her two best generals, she wants on the same page because they apparently are going to be on the, uh, the the best five male superstars, and they're going to try and lead Raw to victory. I think they might end up being co-captains of the tag team team. You think so? Potentially. You think they'll you think they'll take the place of Heath Slater and Ra or uh, the New Day or whoever the tag team champions are at the time? Maybe I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure how Survivor Series is going to work, but it is official. We are uh, going to my have theory. It. My theory is still U.S. champion and United States champion will be the team captains. All right. Um, Kevin Owens will probably have his handful with somebody challenging for him for the belt. Probably. Uh, but we have probably had, Jericho. Probably. Let's be real here. This uh, seems in the direction we're heading. Yeah, uh, because we, we did have a very awkward buddy buddy Stephanie and Mick Foley promo towards the end where they, you know... Uh, She's basically giving him all the props for the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. Yeah, and then, and then and it was him kind of saying, you know, hey, I'm, I'm glad you, you took the initiative and you, you accepted the challenge your brother put out last week. I think that's great. You know, th this is good. And they high-fived. And then they, made a, then they made a triple threat match. Next week, we're pretty much going to get a preview of Hell in a Cell on the go-home show next yeah. week. Well, it's, it's, it's the match that we could have had. Yeah. Because Just not it's so going to be the triple threat with Owens, Rollins, and Jericho, but no sell. Yeah, and no championship on the line. Uh, and then we're also going to be having Sheamus and Cesaro going against the New Day, even though they get a tag team title shot at Hell in a Cell. Yeah. The only difference is, I, I think, I'm going to try and decipher this. I'm going to go back and I'm going to watch clips of old Raws. Okay. <laughs> because I was looking, the graphic they had for the Hell in a Cell match and the graphic they had for the match on Monday Night Raw, the New Day were standing in different order. So I'm wondering if this correlates as to who they're going to be facing. So I'm guessing they'll probably be facing Xavier Woods and Big E on Raw, and then probably Big E and Kofi on the pay-per-view. So the usual, the usual team-up on the pay-per-view. Yeah. Hmm. We'll have to wait and see. Um, so it'll still be two different matches. Just very slightly. Okay, so I do believe... Okay, do... I'm, Goldberg! Uh, he said yes. That's... I already went over that. He came out. They did a really big fanfare for him backstage, having all the people, like, lined up backstage. Uh, the cap of the whole thing was just, like, the very first guy he walked by was Bob Baglin. Who yeah, was Bob Baglin just fucking fit. yelling like a maniac as Goldberg walked down the hallway. Uh... Maybe he just wants to make Goldberg great again now. He's gonna ditch. He's doing wonders. Oh my God. He's doing wonders for Darren Young. I just all of a sudden I want to see Goldberg and Bob Backlund versus Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman. I just want to see Heyman versus 
Bob Backlund. Versus Bob Backlund. I want to see Bob Backlund put the hammer in the chick, crossface chicken wing. I'm, let's do that. Because I'm way more excited for that than I am Lesnar Goldberg too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So basically, you know, he said the same thing he said in the Fox thing or whatever it was, the ESPN. He was just a little more Goldberg when he said it. Yeah. Crowd was going ape shit. Oh yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm not gonna knock it until I see it. I'm gonna knock it no matter what. <laughs> Close-minded son of a bitch. My the the way I'm thinking about it is this match has already happened. Mm -hmm. It sucked. Goldberg hasn't wrestled since, and Brock has only just turned to shit. I have nothing to look forward to. Yeah. I could be pleasantly surprised. But I'm not holding out hope for it. I, I'm more open-minded to this because they've both gone on record to say they wish they could have done a better match at WrestleMania 20. Looking back in hindsight, that both of them had said that they wish they would have been more mature about it. And yeah, and I, th I think that's great. And I think that's going to translate to them having a better match this go-around. I don't think so. I think t 12, years, 12 years has not done anything for Brock Lesnar. And we haven't seen Goldberg in the ring since then, that was his last match. He hasn't done anything since. I have no reason to be excited for this match. But, maybe they'll surprise me. And I just don't like either of them anyway, so. That adds to my... Yeah. That adds to my not, yeah. uh, my lack of excitement for this match. I'm, I'm, I'm there with you on the anti lesnar bandwagon. Yeah. He just... Doesn't do much for me. But hey. Especially, like, there was, the, you know, I had my moments where I was like, okay, you know, I can get behind Lesnar for some things. But then he went and ruined his image with the whole UFC drug testing, both two drug tests. Yeah, no, I, and it ruins, it ruins part of that image where they use the fact that he's a hard-hitting, legit MMA fighter. But he has to get doped up to win his MMA matches, so why yeah. should we... Why should we give a shit that he's so strong? And especially when we have all these people getting hit with wellness policy yeah. uh, you know, suspensions. So, yeah, no. Well, uh, is that officially a Survivor Series thing? Is that I think so. Okay. Uh, I guess they, they haven't really stated when the match is going to happen. Yeah. Just the challenge is put out by Lesnar. Goldberg accepted. So the match is going to happen, and we just don't have an official... This is when it's going to happen. Yeah, it's probably going to be revealed this upcoming mo Monday where Lesnar is supposed to come in and react to what Goldberg right. said. Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, and from what I've heard, both Goldberg and Lesnar are supposed to be there. Um, I, do I know that there's a video online of someone telling Goldberg that Lesnar's going to be at Raw next week. So it's probably Goldberg saying, well, I should probably be there too. Uh, so the go-home show... Uh, to Hell in a Cell will at least have two matches and a Goldberg and Lesnar segment. That's it for this week's Raw. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Click all the links down in the description that's into all of our social medias. So many social medias. Click over to that uh, SoundCloud link if you want to listen to his podcast style. For those of you that are listening to his podcast style, come on over to the YouTube because you get extra videos, just not this week. Yeah, it's, not this week. No extra videos going on this week. We've got, we've got our, our usual four just going the on fade this week. Four. Uh, but if you do want some extra videos, head over to our second channel, Reasonable Wrestling Fans. It's reasonable with a W. Like, like wrestling. wrestling. Uh, where you get all of our YouTube year stuff, you get punishment videos, you get... Because uh, that sounds like something you see on YouTube. Oh, yeah. That's the different kind of tube. Yeah. Uh, unboxing videos, reaction videos, one of which we're going to be posting later this week. That'll be the extra video that uh, everybody gets from us this week, uh, as this guy's going to finally watch Delete or Decay. You had somebody do something for it. And you... I know, I know. I've been putting it off. Uh, and then we had inclement weather. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't want to traverse a storm to come out It's here. gonna happen. Yeah, it's gonna happen. It'll probably be Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah. 
When, uh, when, yeah, Wednesday or Thursday, and we'll we'll have the video up for you. Like uh, I'll po- I'll post it that night. I'll do the same thing I did when I yeah, watched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we're gonna record it. Just I got us on watching. my phone. So uh, so yeah, Ex- expect it just before the weekend. Yeah. Uh, but you have to subscribe over there. Be sure to subscribe over here because we got two more videos coming up this week. We got our SmackDown rundown, and we have our midweek wrap up where we'll have more Dusty Classic to talk about. Uh, but that's it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you at whatever video you decide to watch next. Comment.